the objectives for this session is our introduction is to welcome you. Uh, welcome to the summit. Um, provide an introduction to IOI. Also to connect with each other. We'll be going through an exercise about what is your why. Um, and we'll be breaking out into smaller breakout rooms. Um, let us know in the Zoom chat if you're not able to join. And then our colleagues will be sharing some of our initial research on funding trends and open infrastructure. So make sure you stick around for that. In terms of our team, in addition to our um, IOI staff members you'll be hearing from um, and the presenters, we're thrilled to have with us as a learning partner, Katherine Skinner, who some of you may know from her work through Educopia, um, who will be happy, uh, helping us gather and synthesize our key learnings throughout the course of the event. And in terms of tech technical support from our staff, Anne Britton, and if you want to wave on the on the video, and Jerry Salango will be helping out. So if you have any technical questions, please feel free to reach out to them or post a note in the chat. So without further ado, oh, I'm going to go back one. Um, for those of you who might be newer to IOI, I wanted to provide a little bit of context about how we came to be and what we aim to do. Um, IOI originated out of an event that was designed to talk about collaboration and um, sustainability for open source um, tools for research and scholarly infrastructure back in late 2018. Um, I joined in 2020 as the first kind of paid staff member, but really IOI came about out of this both recognition and frustration in terms of how the research infrastructure um, ecosystem was, was supported or, or not as well supported as it should have been. And so IOI as an organization, as a nonprofit initiative, we're dedicated to increasing the investment in and also the adoption of open infrastructure to help further increased access and more equitable access, as well as participation in the research process. Um, we firmly believe that for open knowledge to flourish and to, have, and to impact and transform society, our systems need to also be similarly designed. Um, our focus is specifically on the technical components of that and seeks to advance in a vision where the open infrastructure, the tools that we rely on, is the default in research and scholarship. We do this in a couple of different ways. Um, for IOI, we employ a research-driven approach uh, to guide our strategies and action designed to help increase the adoption of an investment in open infrastructure. Uh, we provide resources and analysis to help funders and budget holders like yourselves assess, evaluate, and make investment decisions about open infrastructure. And then additionally, we pilot solutions and we help coordinate stakeholders to not only increase the sustainability and resilience in the sector, but also to help further a shared agenda for helping to make open infrastructure the default in research. A little bit more depth about that. Um, in terms of the research analysis and analysis, you know, we really want to dedicate that effort to help reduce some of the bias that we know can exist in these decisions, as well as inform and guide decision makers and projects. We do this in a couple of different ways. You'll hear more about this over the course of the week, um, but really to help increase the visibility as well as um, the needs of open infrastructure services as well as conduct research into some of the conditions needed and mechanisms that can help further the adoption and investment in open infrastructure and adding some additional depth to that work so that we can make some more informed decisions about targeted funding and ways to help you know, really shift um, the, the means in which we, we look at technology underpinning research and scholarship. We also advocate for investment on behalf of projects as well as based on our research on the ecosystem level with different stakeholders to help further a healthier, more diverse and robust ecosystem. Um, this gets at how we can make a more resilient, interdependent and stable ecosystem. And so our research on underlying costs, externalities, transformative influence, what really is needed to help move us away from other models of um, te using technology that might not necessarily be aligned with the values of open research, um, and also examining criticality of open infrastructure 
We'll be talking a little bit more over the course of this week about some of these topics, especially around how we can prioritize investment to address some of these systemic challenges, including assessments of financial health, risk, criticality, and more. And then lastly, we focus on funding mechanisms and think through what sort of recommendations and what sort of strategies we can apply to help address the complexity and some of the critical needs that we're surfacing um, and really building on the work of our colleagues in terms of understanding where we can help amplify their work and where we can help address additional gaps. And so we do this also through conducting research and, and feasibility studies, which we'll be sharing more about this week um, with financial experts to explore targeted funding mechanisms, approaches that help diversify and deepen support, and also long-term engagement. And then we work on pilots and help coordinate action plans that can help bring those to fruition. When we talk about open infrastructure, it's worth recognizing that there are a lot of different interpretations and a lot of different language that's being used, especially over the past few years, about um, when we talk about digital infrastructure, open infrastructure, digital public infrastructure, digital public goods. And so recognizing the complexity here, especially as we um, go into the next few days, so knowing that many of the organizations represented here have specific um, lenses in which they look at some of these problems. So when we talk about digital infrastructure, does that align with open? Does public mean for all? To what extent? Are we thinking about software systems and tools? Are we thinking also about what counts as essential or critical, depending on the lens we bring to this work? And who gets to decide? Um, we've seen not only with Omidyar's recent report on open source ecosystems, the Siegel Family Endowment, their infrastructure report from the past um, year or two and their strategies tied to that, Ford and Sloan Foundation additionally with how they've looked at critical infrastructure and more. And so really keeping that in mind. Ooh. I'm going to get this down eventually. A um, couple of the things I wanted to note, we um, also had a preliminary investigation that one of our colleagues, Simon Gudarzi, um, conducted uh, a little bit earlier this year that really looked at some of this in terms of doing a literature review about how um, open infrastructure has been discussed defined and um, what sort of attributes there. Um, just a small sampling of the work that you can find in the rest of the preliminary investigation that I wanted to just pull out to help seed our conversations for the next few days. Um, we have from the principles of open scholarly infrastructure, the notes of infrastructure that's trusted and relied on by the broad community it serves. Um, from mapping the scholarly communication landscape, and I know we've got Catherine Skinner here with us, really adding an additional lens of academy owned or academy governed tools, platforms and services. And I know that not everyone that's joining us here for this call comes with it comes from the higher education landscape when it comes to open infrastructure, but you can really think of that as sort of the institutions um, and you know associated with that. In terms of additionally thinking about participation um, from the work of who, you know, and whose infrastructure with Leslie Chan and Angela Kune and others, um, deliberately allowing for multiple forms of participation amongst a diverse set of actors and which purposely acknowledges and seeks to redress the power relations within a given context. And so really looking at those dimensions there too. And then lastly, um, UNESCO is you recently had uh, their recommendation on open science ratified by, I want to say it's 193 countries, I'm making that number slightly off, but um, in terms of open science infrastructures referring to shared research infrastructures that are needed to support open science and serve the needs of different communities. So there's a lot of different efforts that are really moving this forward. And when we think about why this, in terms of why this summit, why now, um, also recognizing that there's a record high amount of money that's going to for profits um, to help further open. The link here, which we'll make available, talks about some of these, um, these monopolies in the broader space um, in terms of the ecosystem that we as IOI are situated in when it comes to um, higher education, scholarly publishing, uh, and also thinking about this growing dependence on these monopolies that are 
not only purchasing a number of different services, both for-profit and not-for-profit, um, that are heavily relied on in the ecosystem, but then manifesting additional control over those um, pieces of technology. We're also we're also been faced with increased security and privacy concerns <laughs> around oh, this asset. We mute the additional person there. It looks like they may have may have sneezed. Um, but also thinking of the additional data and privacy concerns that come along with the ownership of these platforms and services that we're relying on. There's increased urgency and also additional experimentation happening to test approaches to further fund and support open technologies. We'll hear from a number of those individuals that are leading some of those pilots this week, um, including the Sovereign Tech Fund, but we also know that there are a number of additional initiatives, both within the digital infrastructure space, as well as looking at community investment when it comes to technology um, that we're starting to see sprout up, as well as um, other more longer standing initiatives such as SCOS. And I know we've got uh, members from SCOS represented here today. And then also a recognition that our existing models are insufficient on their own. And so really using this space to think about what we can do to help augment the existing um, means of funding and increasing support for this ecosystem that we see is so vital um, to the future of research and scholarship and learning. What to expect this week? Um, we have a number of core sessions that are highlighted in gold here um, that you'll also see, you know, kind of in your um, Zoom lobby, you'll see those highlighted there. But over the course of this week, we'll not only be taking you through um, some of the deeper dives into research that we have been conducting, but also bringing in additional experts from other organizations that we um, are learning with and learning from. And so you'll hear from organizations such as 360 Giving, Research on Research Institute, um, from different funders of the Wellcome Trust, the Simons Foundation, from representatives from the Chaos Project, from GitHub, and more. Um, what we will also be doing is we'll be talking about different funding models for open infrastructure and inviting you to join us in terms of a collective funding mechanism, which we'll be sharing more about tomorrow. You can see here also highlighted in green, we've got a number of different opportunities to do deeper dives into specific areas, whether it's around defining criticality and what counts as at risk for infrastructure, governance, financial health, um, information around our catalog of open infrastructure services and what those next steps look like, mapping funding data. And we really in, uh, invite you to join us for as much as you can and we'll be making these session uh, recordings available. With that, I will hand it back to my colleague, Emmy, who'll take us through the next of the exercise. And thank you again for joining us. Emmy, over to you. Thank you so much, Caitlin. Um, all right, so uh, Caitlin's presented sort of the why for IOI, right? Like where, what is our motivation for being here for hosting this event, but also why are we doing this work that we're doing? Um, and we would like to now, you know, hand over the floor to you and uh, have a, we'd like you, to, we'd like you to join us in the next exercise, which is going to be a breakout room exercise um, and share a little bit more with your fellow participants on, you know, why, why are you here? What does open infrastructure mean to you? How do you interact with open infrastructure? And why is supporting open infrastructure important to you? So what is your why here? Hello, my name is Richard Dunks. I'm the Director of Research and Strategy here at IOI, and I'm very excited to have you all here with us, um, sharing your knowledge and expertise with us as we share our knowledge and expertise with you, um, and really move through this week um, just coming away a lot better, more informed, more knowledgeable about, about this important work. So uh, we want to take a moment in this first session to introduce, um, to share with you some of the funding work that we've been doing um, in this space. And to kind of set the stage for, for why we think a funder summit is important, why we think it's all important to have you all here, besides just seeing your lovely smiling faces um, and, and sharing your and basking in your glow, um, just to, to share where we're at, so the, what we understand here. Um, by necessity, um, this session is going to be short. And um, I encourage you, for those of you with questions as we go through this, please record them in the Google Doc and then join us for our follow on sessions. Um, we have one after this session, another one on Wednesday. We'll go more into this research. 
but I want to set the, the stage for this, um, understanding why this the looking into funding trends is important. Um, our goal when we started this last year was to really increase our collective understanding of the funding and infrastructure landscape. Um, where is money flowing? It's, you know, while there's lots of other components to this, the, the lifeblood of these services is the funding that makes them possible. It makes possible the hiring of, of uh, talented individuals, the technology necessary to make things work, all the aspects of it are enabled by funding. Um, and we understand where the, the funding is needed. So where is it going? Where is it not going? Who is it going to? Um, and how much is there in the space? We hear lots of stories about, I don't have enough, or I'm not sure where this is going, or, or things are coming out there, and really understanding um, to a much finer degree what is actually there with the intention of identifying those neglected areas. What are the untapped opportunities? Um, funds that could be released, could be used in, to, to fund more open solutions, whether that's more open uh, source technologies, open governed technologies, community-led technologies, um, all the, the plethora of opportunities that are out there. And we've been very privileged to have uh, join us um, an individual coming out of the nonprofit management space. So we, we knew very early on that our view of it was very limited when we look at scholarly communications. And we wanted to broaden and understand um, what is the, the understanding in the nonprofit you know, space in general about these issues. And we're very privileged to have on, on board Tanya Hernandez-Ortiz, who I'm going to turn it over to now and is going to lead us through uh, this analysis of the funding data that we were able to collect and analyze. So Tanya, if you want to take over. Hi, and welcome, everybody. Um... Um, yes, this is Tania Hernandez. I work as research data analyst at IOI. And the specific goal, as Richard mentioned, of the Funder uh, Trends Research Project is to explore funding for open infrastructure services by identifying key funders and providers, as well as the grant amounts granted and received uh, for such projects. So funders in our research are those grant-making agencies that provide monetary support to organizations to open infrastructure services. Providers are those organizations that develop, provide, and manage an open technology or open system as a service. And for this study, we explore actually uh, various sources including grant databases, annual reports, websites, and other financial disclosures made available by funders and providers. Once we identify uh, key sources of information, we systematically collect uh, data on reported grants by funders and recipients of such grants. And with this information, we conducted an exploratory data analysis using primarily the information on cash grants reported by funders. And before I go into the details of this um, research, uh, as in many other exploratory studies, we have identified several limitations on the data that we are working with. So the First, uh, the data is incomplete. Uh, we recognize uh, that early on. For instance, given the lack of standards, not all funders report complete information on timeframes and total amounts of grants, for instance. So second, uh, this study focuses on cash grants which means that we don't include in-kind donations that can also be really important for some uh, open infrastructure services. So uh, third, we only record grants that have a disclosed amount that is verifiable on funder databases. This means that funders that don't disclose funding are not accu accurately represented in our analysis. Uh, fourth, for comparison purposes, all grants have been converted into a US uh, dollar equivalent, which means that the amounts may be off given currency fluctuations. And lastly, in terms of funding, we found scant information on management of grants. And for instance, uh, where the funding was granted via open calls or invited calls, assessment on the services provided, 
uh, the funding allocation in terms of uh, salaries, programs, and infrastructure investments. So we recognize that there are um, pieces of information that uh, are critical to understand open infrastructure services and are not included in our analysis. So let's move on to the results, again, preliminary results of this project. And uh, we restrict our analysis to the period 2010 to 2020. Uh, this graph shows the percentage of funding by funder and the table to the right shows the sum of funding for the 11 years of analysis. We identified major funders within the ecosystem, five funders, uh, Welcome Trust, Arnold, Hemsley, Sloan and CCI concentrate around 73% of all funding for open infrastructure services. And the remaining 27% or so of funding was distributed among uh, 16 funders. So uh, let's take a closer look at the top. Yeah, let's take a closer look at the top five major funders. And this graph shows the distribution of funding for the same period, 2010 to 2020, across the top five funders. So please note that we use uh, the award year. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, please yeah, note that, it, that we use the award year for this graph. This is the reason why you see a concentration of funders for some years. Funding allocation per year will be ideal, but unfortunately for many grants, we found scant information on timeframes. In any case, the element that seems to be evident is the complexity of the, on the funding cycles. Each year we have changes on the leading actors and the funding among, amounts that they are allocating to open infrastructure services. The complexity on the funding cycles may have consequences for providers since funding is so unpredictable for some years, providers may face uh, challenges in assessing the sustainability of their services. So we were also curious on we were also curious to identify funders that are powering open infrastructure. And by powering, we mean key funders investing in open infrastructure by supporting different services and providing funding for more than one year. And we observed this in two fronts. First, we wanted to identify those funders that have granted most of the grants to open infrastructure services. This graph shows both the number of open infrastructure services in blue bars and funding amounts in green bars. So we identify almost like two profiles of funders. One funder profile are those that have supported numerous services with various grants. Salon will have this profile. They have supported at least then open infrastructure services in the last 10 years or so with around $10 million in cash grants. Another funder profile are those funders that have allocated funding to fewer services, but with higher investments. Uh, Welcome Trust will, will be in this profile. They have allocated more than $20 million into open infrastructure services. So continuing, continuing with this idea of identifying key funders powering open infrastructure uh, services, we also explore those funders providing continued support to a specific open infrastructure services. So we match funders with the services that have received most of the grants. And the criteria for this analysis was to identify those funders that reported to have supported open infrastructure services with three or more grants. 
And in the table, we have the funders, recipients, number of grants, and the founding amounts. So we can see that some services have concentrated most of the grants. For instance, uh, Center for Open Science uh, has received support from at least three funders and received uh, 22 grants. On the contrary, other services, other open infrastructure services, heavily relied on a specific funders. This is, for instance, the case of eLife, that has received support from Welcome Trust through four grants. And in the graph, uh, blue bars again represent the number of grants and green bars the funding amounts. Similarly, than in the previous slide, we have almost like two profiles of funders. One profile are those providing numerous grants to same services. For instance, this is the case of Arno, supporting costs uh, with 13 grants uh, and more than $20 million. The other profile are those funders providing fewer grants, but are but probably allocating more funding to this. As an example, we have again Welcome Trust that on only four grants has provided more than $20 million to eLife. And yeah, uh, what this means going forward? And we, we would like to present some of the characteristics of the ecosystem. Uh, from our funding exploration, we have three main observations or conclusions. First, uh, in this funding exploration, we identify clear supporters powering the open infrastructure ecosystem. The open questions still are how sustainable are those investments from both funders and providers of open infrastructure services. On the funder side, the question is how they assess the sustainability of open infrastructure services. On the provider side, the question is whether or not the open infrastructure services are viable and sustainable without external funding. So second, uh, by observing the funding disparities representing by the constant changes on funding amounts from one year to another, we observe that providers of open infrastructure services have high uncertainty on external funding. Some funders only support open infrastructure services with one grant. Other funders provide numerous grants to various services for several years. Still, the question is on the reliability of such investments over the long term. And for a further discussion on funding mechanisms and financial health of open infrastructure services, please join us in the deep dive conversation that we will have on November the 2nd about financial health and risk for nonprofits in research. And uh, the third element or, or a third conclusion is by looking at the grant information, we recognize that our understanding of open infrastructure funding is still evolving. For instance, by looking at the grant descriptions, uh, funding for open infrastructure services is shifting across uh, funding for open science, for open data, for open access, technology developments. So our hope is to gain clarity on the evolution of the funding as more data becomes available. And lastly, uh, the invitation of IOI for funders is to move the ecosystem further, not only by powering open infrastructure services that is providing funding, but also by empowering open infrastructure providers by co-assessing with them the sustainability of their services in the long term. And um, Richard is going to facilitate the next part of the session. Thank you for that, Tonya. I really appreciate it. It was a great overview of the funding research that we've done. 
it stimulated a lot of questions, which is exactly what we wanted to do with this session. Um, sorry, I'm able to get to all the questions uh, as in the chat. Um, but what we're going to do now is move into a um, a chance for you to kind of react to this, um, everyone to react to this. So there are just a few people in the conversation. We're going to put you all in conversation with each other in the rooms that you were just in um, to consider some of the questions about this, <laughs> which you've just seen. So um, in the breakout rooms, please consider what, what's been presented. Discuss what questions you have about the work. Um, react to it. And you might also consider how well these preliminary findings match your experience with funding. Some of the things have been flagged about what about this service and all these other kinds of things. Um, and again, and emphasize the preliminary nature of this work. We're looking to improve it. So please note those things for us. And we're happy to, to try and address those in the um, after the discussion section. Um, but we're also interested in this idea, how could more and better funding data help you in your work? Um, unfortunately, we're never going to get um, to a perfect space, or at least not in the near future, where we have all the data that we need on this funding. So um, with what we have, what can we do with it? What can it do for us? Um, what questions do you have about the state of funding in the ecosystem? This is very important when we talk about funding data. What, what's your questions about it? And in particular, this question, how could more transparency about funding help you? Um, some of you notice there's providers that are not being uh, included in this, haven't been included in this. It's because they don't share their funding data with us. So we don't have that transparency to do the real analysis that we would like to do. So I um, encourage us as you make this case making uh, for what we want to be able to do with this work. Uh, so with that, we'll have 10 minutes for this. And I'm just going to caution, we encourage you to make the notes because uh, we won't have a lot of time to take all of the questions. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna kind of scan through them. We'll take some of the very key questions. And again, I highly encourage you if you have more questions about this work for our next sessions, um, and we'll be happy to, to, to bring those into, into this work. So with that, uh, I think we can open up the breakout rooms. Um, I would like to really quick, um, Emmy, do you wanna start sharing again and I can, Going to wrap up this section on some next steps for us, and then we're going to go into our wrap up. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, take control. Um, so we want to continue. So where we go from here, we're sharing insights to open source science community again to help drive decision making at all levels, uh, whether it's funders, uh, providers, sponsors of, of the of of these services, everyone who's involved, and again to to elevate the conversation and 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 really kind of get some great thinking going on and some some movement, some action out of this. Um, let me share click again again. There we go. Um, make this data more accessible through a catalog of open infrastructure services. We'll be talking about that later today about what that is and where we're going with it. Again, just to surface these informations, kind of um, overcome some of these information asymmetries in the space. And wait for it. Uh, provide more interactive ways of viewing the data. So we have some inspiration. Open Science Observatory, World Health Organization has some great funding dashboards. Um, some of those things are, are inspirations for us in terms of, as some of you mentioned, right, a map and some of those ways, again, to make this data more accessible. Um, how you can help, if you have more questions, please join us for the Mapping Funding Challenges panel discussion at the top of the hour after this. Uh, join us for our Financial Health and Risks non nonprofit research deep dive. Uh, Tanya will be sharing more of her research uh, in this area about understanding some baselines of financial health that are very helpful for us in assessing, you know, what who needs help and what help is needed really in this space. And again, uh, watch for more documentation on this work as we release it in the coming months. And please feel free to research the data, review the data we've collected, and if you can find your own results. Uh, again, we as we have stressed in this, this is very um, initial preliminary research. Uh, not inclusive of everything in open infrastructure, nor is it inclusive of all the funding for various reasons. Uh, things we've tried to deal with, some things we just can't. So uh, really interested in what, what you find, and, and please feel free to, to feed that back into us. With that, I'm happy to turn my parts over. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts in the, in the docs and in the conversation, and we look forward to continuing the conversation with you over the next week. Thank you so much, Richard, and uh, everyone, and Tanya, for your er earlier presentation as well. So in this last sort of few minutes, I would like to uh, bring to your attention what's gonna happen for the next few, well, today and tomorrow in this summit. Uh, as Richard mentioned, uh, there is a fantastic panel that is uh, going to happen in about 30 minutes from now uh, on mapping funding for uh, open infrastructure. And uh, there will be a chance to, I think, uh, really discuss some of these questions that you raised in the chat in, in a lot more depth uh, with, with others in this space as well. So please do join us for that. 
uh, later on tonight, my time, but maybe afternoon for some of you at 9 p.m. GMT, we have a session on the catalog of infrastructure services uh, where uh, our user researcher, Taymor, will be presenting some of the um, uh, latest research that we've done with funders and budget holders in this space on kind of what, what does a, a product, if you will, or a platform that, you know, exposes more of this or give more of this information about uh, uh, open infrastructure services, how, how can it look like, how can it provide value? So if you're interested in that, uh, please come and join us in a few hours time. Uh, in terms of tomorrow, at the same time as this session, there will be a, a core session again. Um, and this time we're going to look at uh, how we can um, deepen investment into the open infrastructure space. Uh, it's hopefully going to be a fascinating uh, presentation by our research affiliate, Samala. Um, she'll be presenting her work on existing funding models in nonprofit and corporate finance space, and as well as her recommendations as well. And there'll be space for all of us to discuss you know, the impact of that uh, on our own work, as well as, uh, yeah, what do we need in order to uh, participate in, in the sort of future funding mechanisms in this space. Um, later on tomorrow as well, we have our first hands-on sessions. You might have received our emails uh, last week, uh, I believe, uh, which uh, shared the information for you to join our um, collective fund pilot for the summit. So uh, there is a uh, link that you can use to join the platform called budget if you haven't already. Uh, thank you for those of you who have joined um, and we're really, really looking forward to sharing more about that tomorrow in the core session and in the hands on you have a chance to meet the team at greater than who will introduce us to, you know, the concepts and also the process behind that as well. So stay tuned for that. Before we close out, um, just would like to learn a little bit more about your hopes and expectations as a checkout exercise for this week. Uh, we'll do something called Chatterfall. Uh, this is the format that we use again in future sessions. What I'd like you to do is to think about the question, what are your hopes and expectations for this week? And write one thing in the Zoom chat, but don't press enter yet. So if you could just take about 30 seconds and have a think, put an answer in the Zoom chat. What are we hoping for and expecting out of this week together?